So let's uh, try to solve the arbitrary read-write lab. Uh, at the moment, I haven't modified the source code at all. I just want to run it and see what it does. So I built the project, which uh, pushed the binary onto the target VM. You can see uh, it's there. And I have attached WinBag, and I've set a breakpoint on the area of the vulnerable function where it's handling the superior flag. And the reason is to uh, basically uh, detect after we win the race condition, because in this case, we are not going to use the debugger to force winning the race. So we need some kind of breakpoint to detect uh, after we win the race condition. So this is this breakpoint is really useful here. And so, yeah, now we're going to start running the binary. OK, so we start the binary. Um, it doesn't show anything at the moment. It's initializing all the KTM object and stuff to start uh, running the race. OK, so now it's starting to win the race condition. It's done one attempt. And we can see the VM is starting to hang. So let's go back to the debugger. OK, so we've got our breakpoint hit, which means we actually won the race condition. So remember, uh, the two fake canisments we, we get the kernel uh, to actually parse are the leak canisment and the trap canisment. Uh, so the first one is the leak enlistment. And in the debugger, we hit this area of the code where it's testing the uh, superior flag. But basically, if we go back, we can see um, minus 88, which 88 is the, the offset for the next same RM. Uh, in the k enlistment structure. So it means RDI holds the, the actual shifted enlistment and R14 holds the beginning of the k enlistment. So this is our enlistment, our fake enlistment in New Zealand. So we can see it points to the trap enlistment and, um, and it had the flag set for the superior case. Okay, so we'll just continue execution. I guess before we do that, we can check its mutex. Okay, so it looks like we've already got the pointers written to it that we're gonna leak in a second. So we're just going to uh, continue execution until it, it actually hits the trap enlistment. So here we see it actually handled the trap enlistment. So if we could look at R14 now, and we go back to our enlistment 55A0. Right, 55A0. So this is an offset into our trap enlistment. So now it's handling our trap enlistment, and we can hit go. Nice. So we detected we won the race condition from Userland because we detected that the trap enlistment was touched and the flag wasn't set. And here we can see the leaked case thread address and the leaked K resource manager address, which are DDA080. So if we go back to DDA080, this is the offset into the case thread address, and the other one is FBA9B0. So this is the offset into the K resource measures. OK, so we managed to leak them from username. Nice. So now what we can do is we can hit a key in order to inject the remaining enlistments, which obviously at the moment are not actually initialized. But let's see what happens. OK, so I hit a key, and we can see it's hanging again. So this is because, right, so because we injected two new enlistments into the chain of enlistments, again, our breakpoint hits. So we can look at R14. This is our new chain of enlistments. And we have our first enlistment, which is the, well, it's the empty good mode enlistment, but this is supposed to be the good mode enlistment. And then we would have the second enlistment, which would be uh, this address. 
and we can see this address, right, which ends with BAAC0, which um, FBA, right, so this is the K resource manager and Nisman head, right, because BA9B0 is the K resource manager. So this is our uh, escape enlistment. So it's it, the escape enlistment is, is defined, but the actual God mode enlistment at the moment is not actually initialized. Let's go back to our K enlistment. So we know in the mutex there is a header, there is a wait list head, and this is our fake K wait block. And we know the waste wait list entry, the K wait block, the list entry field is at the beginning, so we don't need to subtract anything. So, okay, so our K wait block um, has the wait type set to minus one. It's a character, so, right, so this is correct. This is minus one, and it has a waitlist entry that points to, to itself. So that's it. This is an empty waitlist entry. Okay. So here we know the thread is set to null. So obviously it's not going to work because it's going to actually dereference a null pointer at some point. But let's see where it goes. Okay. So if we continue execution, we can see that it crashes. Um, nothing happens more here on, on the user line side. So let's analyze the, the crash by clicking the bank analyze dash B. A few moments later. Okay, so this is done. So let's see where we are. Um, we can see, let's go back. So we got an attempt to access a pageable address. Okay, nice. So this is the interesting bit. We can see it crashed on ki try and wait thread plus 67. So let's go there. So here, here the, the decompiler is a bit confused. Okay, so just so it's less confused, I'm, I'm just clicking here on the log BTS. So we can see it's getting the thread address and then it's, it's actually right. So it didn't go on the actual write zero case because the write zero case is at the very end of the function, if I recall correctly, which is here, right? It should should have gone there. But where we are, if we go back, basically it crashed because it tried to to um yeah to dereference the this address which is zero where the thread lock here uh, on a thread sorry is zero so. When it's referencing the address, it's referencing zero. So you see RBX here is zero. So yeah, so it, it crashed. Um, so we need to set uh, these flags correctly in order to actually write, uh, reach our write zero primitive. And if we look at the backtrace, again, we see the ki try and wait thread plus 67. So we can make a note of this address uh, so we can set a breakpoint uh, later. Okay, and so obviously here uh, we can't really just detach and reattach because uh, the target VM uh, has crashed. So we need to restore to a previously uh, saved uh, snapshot and reattach with the debugger. So I have started uh, modifying the init code mode enlistment for arbitrary read write function. We know it takes the case thread address as an argument. And so, yeah, we need to set this thread relative to the case thread address and taking into account 
previous mode and thread lock, but for now, I just want to test with an actual thread pointer, which is a valid one and see where it goes into the, the KI um, try and wait thread. So I built the binary and I pushed it onto the target VM. And also I attached windbag and set a breakpoint on the uh, superior enlistment to detect when we win the race condition. So let's start the binary now. So it's initializing the KTM object and environment. It's going to try to win the race condition in a second. Okay. So on the first attempt, it passed 81 hex enlistment. And yeah, we won the race condition. So it's passing the leak enlistment, which I'm going to skip. And now it's passing the trap enlistment. So now it's waiting for us to inject uh, the enlistment, the next enlistment. Okay, so we detected that we won the race condition. Like I said, we we got the case thread address and the case resource manager address. So now we're going to inject the good mode enlistment. Okay, so we hit again our, our breakpoints while it's passing the good mode enlistment. So, so let's analyze this enlistment. So this enlistment has a mutex. The mutex has a header, waitlist head, and we know this is a K weight block. This one. Um, yeah, so 1080. Okay, so we managed to set our target address to 1080. So that's our case thread. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a breakpoint on the function doing the write zero. So at the moment we are in the vulnerable function. So I set a breakpoint on on the ki try unwait thread. So let's continue execution. So I'm just going to disable this second breakpoint and I'm going to debug that. So let's set a breakpoint. We know it crashed earlier when it was trying to uh, um, test the thread lock, uh, the one bit. So let's set a breakpoint here with control F2. at offset 67. Okay. But before we do that, actually what we want is you want to analyze the actual case thread structure. So let's go back to our case thread. So this is our case thread. And so if we look at the actual structure itself, we know it has a previous mode and thread lock. So let's analyze these two fields. So analyze the thread lock and the previous mode. Right, so this thread lock is zero, okay? And previous mode is one. So previous one is one because it's uh, from um, from username and we want to set it to, to zero. Yeah, if we analyze the code, we need that one bit to be um, to be zero, right? Uh, because if that one bit is zero, it's gonna set it to one, okay? So, and the other thing is we don't wanna be corrupting, well, it's actually doing the, the 64 bits uh, right of zero, we want, this to corrupt previous mode, but we don't we want it to corrupt other fields, right? So let's analyze what is in there before previous mode. 
So this is all zero except the first one, which is two. I guess let's go back to two, three, two, right? So two, three, two is the offset and this is the address. So I'm just looking at the previous mode now, right? So the previous mode is set to one, right? So this is the previous mode. Now, if I do minus, minus eight, basically, this is basically, and I'm just gonna print eight bytes, right? So this is basically the end of the, of the array, which is user affinity field, right? So these are all zero, right? Okay, so that's good. So the the lower byte is zero, okay? But if I if I set it if if, if I use that address, the lower byte is zero, but then it's gonna set it to one, okay? But then it's gonna set the full 64 bits to zero, but it, we don't win anything because it's not gonna corrupt corrupt previous mode, right? So we just need basically to do minus eight plus one. And if we do that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna it's gonna look at this thread log. So this is this thread log field. The lower byte is zero. So that's good. We pass we pass the we pass the check for the thread log. And then it sets it to one to pass the, the, the spin lock. And then later, when it actually sets the full 64 bit, it's gonna override previous mode with zero. So that that works. So now basically what we need to check as well is the other thing that are checked on the honor thread. So we know the honor thread is there. It's going to check the honor thread. It's going to go in there on the, the spin lock. Okay. So assuming it's zero, assuming it's zero, what it's doing is it's checking the honest thread state field. And if it's none five, it's gonna go into the B set thread log zero, which is exactly what we want. We want it to go there and skip the whole function, right? So this is the where it's actually going to reach our right zero primitive. So this this will be setting previous mode to zero, right? So let's go back. So we want the state to be none five, right? Okay. It doesn't really matter, but at the moment, if we look at the state field as well, the state field is two. But once we do the shift uh, and we make it as if this was this thread, we will need to make sure the state field is not five, right? Because this is going to be our fake case thread pointer adjusted so then it actually reaches the, the code we want, right? So the only thing we need to take into account is that it's actually going to set the offsets of thread lock, right? Uh, when it's actually going into here. So here it's referencing on a thread plus the offset of thread lock, which is in our case offset 40. So we need to add, add Two, three, two, but we also need to subtract 40. So when it actually does that addition, 40, we need to subtract it. So when it's actually doing uh, that addition, it cancels the, the other one. So we actually need to subtract 40. So we're going to do minus 40, right? So this is our new address, actually but I missed the plus one. Yeah, the, the bytes value don't matter uh, for this. Okay, so we have the address for each of the fields, thread lock, state, and previous mode. Um, so assuming we take this address as our fake case thread, like to, as a starting point, what's gonna happen is if we look at offset 40, And we look for eight bytes. This is our, this is our thread log, right? So that's nice. We can see zero is the lower byte. 
So it's going to pass the spin lock, but then at the end, it's going to actually uh, replace it with one. And then uh, it's going to, at the very end of the function, it will actually set it the full 64 bit to zero and it's going to curb the previous mode byte to, to zero. So that's good. The, the other thing we need is we need the state field to be different from five. So let's look at the state field at offset 184. And just one, and look at one byte. So this is our fake case thread and it's going to look at offset 184, thinking this is the real case thread. Okay, so this is zero, so that's not five, so that's good. So that should, so that should work. We should be able to um, use that um, in order to to curb this one byte to zero, and and the rest should work. So a nice thing to do is to actually use the debugger to uh, confirm that. So we know the k weight block that is being passed is in the second argument. So if we look at this function, function generator, it's passed into RDX. Okay. So this is our k-weight block. Right, with the weight tab set to FF. And so the thread at offset 18 is our case thread, right? Okay, so now what we can do is we can edit that keyword and replace it with the actual value that we want. So we're just shifting it a little bit to take into account previous mode, thread lock, and the offset. So we, we pass all the conditions and we override previous mode. So now we've done that, we're just going to analyze the k weight block again. And like, as you can see, the k thread has been set now. I guess we can step now. We can step in the function. So I'm just going to step in the debugger, might be faster. Okay, so here it's test, test tested RBX plus 40. And we know it was, well, it was zero, but it set it to one. So that's good. So now it's retrieving EX and it's zero, so it's not five. Okay, so now it's going to take the condition and jump to the thread lock zero. Nice. So now we are actually on, so it didn't update the, the compiler window, but we are actually on the, on the spin lock. Okay. Oh, no, right. We, we, we're again here. Okay. Okay, let's step over. Okay. So it set it to one, but now it's gonna set the full keyword to zero because R14 is zero, right? So if I do eight bytes, now it's gonna set the full keyword to zero. So it set the the lower byte to zero earlier during the spin lock, and now it's going to set the full 64 bit to zero. So that's that that works. So it, it did work. It did work. So let's go back to printing the case thread now. 
right nice see so the previous mode now is set to zero it was ban one before because we corrupted the, the bytes so it, it looks like it's working now we need to try in in the um, without the debugger really and just for the sake of completeness let's check what happened if it crashes if we continue execution so this is not a crash this is just an exception okay so i'm just going to disable the breakpoints Okay, nice. So now what is happening is it's hitting the escape enlistments, right? Uh, because this points to 4E50. 4E50. So it's it's the enlistment head field of the key resource manager. So now we should exit the loop, right? And it didn't crash so far, so that's good. Okay, so no crash. Okay, and we return to userland. So that's a good sign. It means if we add this code into our exploit, we should be able to do it without the debugger. So we have modified the exploit. So this is kind of what we got from the debugger. Uh, this is the kind of computation we realized would work. Um, we basically uh, have specific offsets for each of the operating system versions. So if we look for instance for previous mode, so we know that for Windows 10, 1809, uh, previous mode is at offset 232. And the other one we have as well is a state offset 184 and, um, and the thread lock at offset 40, right? So, yeah, so this is basically what we do here with like, so we can support multiple operating system versions. But yeah, so we use the case thread address, we add 232 hex, then we subtract 40. Um, the idea is that we take into account the fact that it's going to access the thread lock at offset 40, so we need to subtract it to compensate for that. And then we add to 3 so, so we reach the previous mode field. And then from uh, experience, we realized that, okay, if we subtract eight and add one, we're gonna be able to basically have the lower byte of what it thinks is the thread lock, but it's actually just, preview, just before previous mode. It's, go it's gonna see it's zero, so it's gonna it's going to actually acquire the spin lock. It's going to actually acquire the lock uh, when it's actually doing the, the spin lock. And the plus one, so when it overrides the eight bytes, it actually clubbers the previous mode uh, character, right? So I have already pushed the binary onto the target VM and I set the breakpoint on the um, specific uh, area that allows us to detect when a fake enlistment is passed. Okay, nice. So six attempts in this case, and looks like we won the race condition. Yeah. So this is the leak enlistment. This is the trap enlistment. Now it's waiting for us to inject the code mode enlistment. So first we need to detect from Museland that we won the race, okay. So this is the case thread address. So this is the computed address that we gonna set our fake case thread two, and now we're going to inject our gold mode and escape enlistment. So I'm going to hit enter. So as expected, we hit the code uh, because it's passing our gold mode enlistment. So yeah, so this is our real case thread, right? So this is previous mode, state, and thread lock. Do you want them? Okay, 
So we know the shred dog is zero. We know the previous mode is one at the moment. So we're gonna parse the, we're gonna let the kernel parse our fake gold mode on this mint. Okay, nice. So now it's handling our escape on this mint. So let's have a look again our, at our case thread. Nice. We got our pre previous mode set to zero. That's exactly what we want. So now we, our recovery thread left the kernel and we are back into user land and we need to implement the code to actually test uh, the arbitrary kernel read write. Okay, so let's look at the code uh, we need to add to actually confirm we can get, we have the arbitrary read write in user land. So this is the, this thread uh, function that that is a uh, part of the recovery thread. So we know it's going to call recover thread. It's going to call the vulnerable function. And once it returns, it means it returned from kernel. And so now what we do basically we, is we just try to call the the function nt read virtual memory and in nt um, write virtual memory to confirm if you can read arbitrary kernel addresses and, and write them. So I've just chosen the uh, resource manager address, which we lit. Um, so if rcval is more or equal to zero, it means success. If it's less than zero, it means errors. It's going to error if basically we didn't manage to get uh, kernel mode um, privileges. So yeah, so basically we're just going to read this k resource manager address into the pointer. Uh, if we manage to, if we pass that test, it means it worked. We're just going to print the, the actual value that we read. Uh, it's going to be the first, uh, few bytes of the K resource manager structure. Uh, then we're going to wait to hit a key and then we're going to, um, basically override that with dead beef. And then we're going to read it, read it again to confirm we were able to read dead beef and we're going to print it. Um, and we're going to wait again. So we can, each time we wait, we can confirm from kernel if it worked as expected. And then we're going to restore the original data just to avoid any problem. Okay. So I've pushed the binary onto the target VM and I set the regular usual breakpoints. So I'm going to run the binary now. Okay, so we did 13 hex attempts. Okay, we won the race condition. This is the leak enlistment. Okay, so this is the trap enlistment. Okay, so now we are able to inject our gold mode enlistment. So I'm just gonna take a note of the actual key resource manager later and just going to inject the good mode and escape enlistment. I'm going to hit enter. So this is the good mode enlistment. This is the escape enlistment. Okay. So now we should be able to test the arbitrary kernel read write primitives. So I guess we can actually print the beginning of the K resource manager just to see Just gonna print it as a D word, right? So what we're interested in is our the first D word. So this is the first D word, okay? Um, this is what we read. Sorry, the first Q word we read. So right. So this is the first Q word that we read. So let's go continue. Now let's actually hit a key. Nice. See, we confirmed that we were able to read 
that pointer, well, that keyword, and it's the same. So we were able to read. So now let's hit a key. Um, but we didn't actually corrupt it some, somehow, did we? So just gonna break. Oh, we did manage to corrupt it. Okay. Just my, my code is probably not valid because I'm printing the uh, pointer. Um, oh, right. Because I'm printing origin pointer instead of pointer here. So it should have been pointer. But the thing is, we can confirm that we were able to read and to, to write because I confirm in the kernel that the value has been changed. So that's good. So now let's continue. Um, and we return. And now if I go back in the debugger again, and we restore the value. Well, almost we missed the one, but I guess our code, yeah, I guess it's just that the, the structure probably evolved. So, but yeah, we are able to write and to read the canon memory. It worked. And the export is stable. We don't even need to restart the VM anymore and restore it. Great. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching.